Ray is starting to be more and more active in the family, whether it's actually partaking in the chores or, you know, actually uh, wanting to be there at <laughs> at Meadie's events, which is the, uh, I, I was gonna say the school festival again, but the sports festival or whatever, you know, it's like the pre-sports festival, really gotta get these kids ready for middle school and high school. But also with Ray being able to uh, channel Meadie's emotions through him, you know? So I, I really like those scenes. And of course, we're continuing with the little background story that's going to take a big stage later on with uh, Ogino Ryo and Kyu-chan, where it seems like Kyu-chan is right now continuing to feed uh, Ryo the... Uh, the, the information. I assume that's what's happening with these short scenes that we've been having with these two. And of course, here's Kuchan who's just kind of like, ah, fuck. You know, this is this is what they this they they, they got it coming. But I, I assume that perhaps at some point he's going to be like, no, this is, you know, I, I can't let this happen to me or or whatever. We'll we'll just have to see. And also for this title, Lost at Sea. I'm assuming that we're talking metaphorical, but I was thinking like, what if it's actually literal? They're, they're going on a fishing trip and now they're lost at sea. <laughs> we'll just have to see, huh? If you guys enjoyed the content, remember to leave this video a like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you didn't like the content, dislike the video and we'll be on our way. Let's get started. Oh, Christmas, huh? Wow, it's been a year already because they met her last Christmas. Wow. Alright. <laughs> Silent? <laughs> That's why when sang it with Mama was her she she's mentioned her mom. I wonder if what if she's like, I want to see my mother. <laughs> I miss her. It's been a year. One for him and one for... Is that? Is that... Is that his... Okay. Yeah, it was like she cut her hair and she doesn't have her, her makeup on. <gasps> it's Misaki. <laughs> Maybe her Christmas wish is she wants her daughter back. You know, sometimes you don't know what you have until you lose it. <laughs> Just in case you forgot. <laughs> what do you mean you've come to take Midi? Oh yeah, hold on! You can be out here taking a child away from her two gay father- sorry, <laughs> her fathers? <laughs> she really is out here tossing out the mother card, dude. Uh-oh. Oh! <laughs> He's like, damn, really can't beat flesh and blood. So I suppose this is the loss at sea? <laughs> He's so upset. Look at how great my life is right now. You know, I really like the way Misaki dresses. Look at all these clothes that she's got. Ah, oh, that's such a- that's such a- It's 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 such a hard thing for a kid. They, she, she wants the best of both worlds. <laughs> mm. Dude, she's like, I got three parents. This is great. <laughs> It's making me happy. <laughs> That's the issue. Just be in there, supervise everything then, huh? But 
But this is like when she's outside of her work. You know, when she's not fucking drinking. <laughs> He's so mad. <laughs> hey, yeah, this is good. <laughs> they love processed food, man. Oh, is that why she's wearing this fucking scarf? Oh, no, so everything in my head is just all whirling at once. I, re I, I really had like a I need to pause this now moment, but... I got fired. Cancer? So she wants to spend her twilight years. She wants to spend her twilight years with her child. Oh god, my- <laughs> Understandable. She really came crashing in here like a fucking Korean drama. In the end, it's 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 a very selfish request, but uh, if you're gonna rent an apartment nearby, you can just you know. I mean, yeah, like, it, it's a very selfish request. <laughs> now give me back my fucking kid. <laughs> oh, she's throwing that card on you! Oh, shit! Hey, yo, is the fucking Sua family behind us? Where the fuck is Ogino Ryo doing? Yeah, uh, first of all, they they, they they they've already come to to the whole conclusion that, you know, their life is dangerous, but <laughs> came in like a freight train. I told her. So he's trying to get the him away in order to get me away. Ooh. And they're gonna take her out if you don't. Get rid of her soon. Hey, you know, trying to fucking blast everybody in the sewer for time to end this bloodline. Yeah, your father literally sent you to kill this guy <laughs> as a warning for you. <laughs> Put an end to the lies. Wow. Really out here erasing everything. <laughs> We're going out, let's go. <laughs> Oh my god! Jesus! <laughs> We're sending you off! All before it ends? You know, the three dead models don't really look all that bad. 
<laughs> Look, I'm getting into it. Oh my god, what a fucking hazard. <laughs> oh, okay. <There. laughs> oh, she's out here rock climbing. Whoa. <laughs> if anything happened to our girl, she, she'll be fine. Yeah. Calm down, dude. <laughs> Oh shit, he's gonna show- Oh my god, dude, this man's fucking competing! In speed climbing, dude! He's so sc Is he scared of height? <laughs> See you at six. Damn. Oh shit! The fucking vibes of Christmas songs are back! I love the way she holds it. <laughs> Come on, she's giving you a bite. A mama's touch, huh? He's like, I, I've got something that I, I can't have. Oh, we gotta let you at her house for for you know <laughs> a few weeks, a few months. Meanwhile, we're gonna fucking blast this organization. <laughs> All good things have to come to an end. Mm-hmm. Oh, she is waiting at the, already at the pier. This is the best day ever, dude. She gets to hang out with her dad, and you get to go back to your mom. <laughs> oh, dude, a permanent sleepover, dude. <laughs> Damn, that's a big scarf. She had a scarf back when um Masaki sent her off too, right? Miri's face when she realized, oh, I'm not going to see the <laughs> ah! Oh, we just gotta end it like that! I guess I'll just sadly bop to the song. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> let's go back to the center. <laughs> Alright, so that was episode 10 of Buddy Daddies. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a great episode. You know, I've been fucking asking if we're ever gonna see Masaki again. <laughs> And here we are, we got to see Misaki, but she's very different from the way that she was before. And I can only assume that was like months, you know, that that's like months of like fucking character change. <laughs> you know, personal development for her. And, and you know, I, 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 I'd like to know what people's opinion on Misaki is because I, uh, of course, if you've seen you know episode three or episode four of my reaction you know that i i do like misaki i like characters like these and i i really like this tribulation that she went through off screen you know of course because that the focus isn't on her I, I, actually before i even get into misaki we're gonna get into the point that the reason why misaki is here in the first place which is with, with kuchan you know he's the guy who contacted misaki and he's the one who told her about rei and kazuki's real job in order to essentially give her ammunition <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, because he's like, I know that these boys aren't going to willingly let you take her. So, uh, take Miri. So, I'm gonna give you, so, so, you know, I'm gonna give you some ammunition and you can fucking use that at your own will. And that's exactly what Misaki did. And of course, it fucking worked. I really like that this is Kyu-chan's way of... Uh, <laughs> telling him to wake up but uh, at the same time you know he does care about meaty and he wants meaty to not die because of these two dumbbells you know and that's why he's decided to pull out his trump card which is misaki and just getting her to take meaty back the thing is is that even though with what misaki says you know i've changed and all that and she's gonna go back to her parents and she's going to live with them for a while but like <laughs> she she, she, she's given us this whole cancer story, which is very funny considering that I, I I was thinking she really came in here like a fucking Korean drama. And she's now like, I have a disease that will, ki that will kill me <laughs> in how many days? I don't know. <laughs> good for you, Masaki. I mean, not good for you. You're dying of cancer. I'm, I'm sorry. I was supposed to be talking about Kyu-chan. I just went right back to Misaki. This is like the best way that Kyu-chan wants to do it. You know, this is the best decision that he thinks. And and and, and I just feel like it kind of not, it won't end in both. I mean, in terms of it ending in Midi being sad, there is a chance that it could happen on both sides. Especially with Misaki having her her cancer, not knowing how long she she's got to live, you know, like it's it's very hard for like oh, so Misaki is gonna spend her essentially her twilight years with Midi, and, and then after that, is Midi going to get taken by her uh, uh by by her grandparents? To which I will say, if Midi hasn't gotten it yet, I assume that she'll start to get it now once she realizes that she's not going to be able to see her her two papas anymore. And uh, I, I assume she's gonna grow up with some fucking abandonment issue. <laughs> you know, like her mom sent her off once, and then her dad sent her off once as well. And then if we're continuing with this storyline, and Misaki dies, and uh, you know, for cancer and whatever. I don't know why I have to say it like that. It's, it, it just sounds so dim dismissive when I'm just like, cancer or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the default word. But, you know, if Misaki dies and then Midi gets taken, oh, gets taken by her, par her grandparents, that's like another form of uh, uh, <laughs> abandonment, even though, you know, it's not Misaki's fault for dying. Uh, that that could feed into her e eventual abandonment issue once she connects everything together, you know? <laughs> it's- it, overall, it's just bad. <laughs> it's- it, it really is just bad. And like, the ammunition, which is Rei and Kazuki not living a normal life, if, if that wasn't in the equation, we really could go to the point of I mean, I, I wouldn't know how Rei and Kazuki would pick up Midi, but, uh, you know, anyways. If it wasn't for that fucking <laughs> part of, of, of their life, them, you know, having a parental dispute and maybe even duking it out in court or at some point, you know, just agreeing that maybe we should just sh share the kid, <laughs> you know? You know, she gets to go to my place during these times of the month, and she gets to go to your place at time of the month. You know, like, divorced parents. Except they're not divorced, they're not even dating in the first place. You know, these two guys aren't even blood related to her. And of course, I feel like when it comes to the whole blood relationship, if you take that to- I don't know how it is in Japan, but if, you know, if you take that shit to court and, like, I'm this child's mother, you know, like, blood related mother, I feel like- you usually tend to have like a better case of, of, of winning. Anyways, anyways, you know, let's talk about Misaki. <laughs> so Misaki, she, of course we saw in her life, she works in a bar. She feels like her daughter had taken away her dream because whatever dream she had before, that was crushed because she was pregnant and she couldn't, you know, be 100% at her job or whatever because she has to take care of her kid because you know a lot of times once you have kid it kind of does feel like your life is over because you have to spend all your resources all your time on your kid so it, it was very understandable thing that Misaki felt that way and also when we saw her she was working and she was drinking while she was at work and also her man is her pimp I guess I <laughs> 
You know, he really just came in there and just backhanded her. <laughs> so, like, she she wasn't in a, a, a good situation. It was in a very negative, she was in a very negative space. And, of course, when you don't really have power over the things that you, you know, you, when you don't have power over, let's say, her man, you know, she can't really do much about him because he's just got a fucking backhand her. And she needs the money in order to maintain this whole shit. So she she doesn't really have she fe I would assume she feels like she doesn't have a, a lot of control over that. And the only thing that she really has control over, I'm saying it very loosely, uh, the thing that she does have control over is her daughter. And so it's <laughs> with that, you know, it's very easy to put all that negative thoughts onto your daughter instead of you know, to the things that you can't control, to, to the things that you're, you're, perhaps you're a little afraid of. So it, it's, it's understandable that Misaki during that time had reached to a boiling point and she just couldn't handle anymore. And her decision to do was to send Midi off, hopefully get her daughter to, <laughs> yeah, and set her daughter as blackmail material to this guy, to which I, you know, if Rei and Kazuki didn't kill him, I wonder what would have happened to Midi if she came. I mean, the guy didn't even know who she was at, at that time. He was just <laughs> fucking pointing a gun at her. Then, then again, you know, it, they were in a shootout and all. It, it kind of makes me wonder what he would have actually done, whether he was just like snuff the kid, you know, or if he just, he just decided to send it back. And it, it was just, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> the wife of that guy would probably snuff the kid. I'll be honest. She's all aggressive. <laughs> But I think, you know, now that I think about it, seeing that woman in the first episode, the way that she acts versus uh, Misaki, I, I can see that that guy who's the father of Mirai, I can see that he's got a type. <laughs> Just from two people. I, <laughs> Anyways, we have all that situation, you know, that boiled up over that. And so now we haven't seen Misaki for months. And as she retells her story, that she got fired because she, I assume she can't sing anymore and her man broke up with her, her, her man left her. <laughs> Which I assume like, was he also a manager of this club? I assume, cause he got a little upset that there were customers in the bar. So like, I don't know, but she, <laughs> she, she got cancer, you know? So now, uh, or, or well, she, didn't had can she already had cancer, but cancer had spread all the way up to her 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 throat, which I'm not exactly sure what cancer specifically that she has, but it, it spread up to her throat and she can't really sing anymore. And a a a as she says, so you know, I want a fresh start with my daughter. Hitting rock bottom has made me realize what's most important in life. And uh, uh, of course, she was already in 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 like that bad situation that she had before that negative space but now she had lost Meaty and then ever all that horrible stuff that had happened to her you know cancer being fired from her job and, and all that 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 is truly her hitting rock bottom because at that point I would assume you know she'd realize that she lost Meaty as well that's made her realize that out of all this negative shit that's happened in her life Meaty was the person that was you know the the, the positive force because kind of, kind of like with Misaki saying like, how is it that she's able to just laugh at n literally nothing? It pisses me off. And of course, perhaps that is also another sort of envy coming from Misaki. Because like, she's like, God, I wish I was that happy. <laughs> but, you know, it could be something that she comes to realize. Oh my God, the only ha great thing in my life was meaty. And so now she's hit rock bottom and she, she, she says she's going to live out the rest of her life uh, you know, knowing that she's, <laughs> she's going to die eventually. She just wants the, 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 the happy thing in her life back, which is her daughter. And God, I just, ugh, these sort of stuff just, just really fucking hits me, man. I, 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 <laughs> you've been watching me for a while, you know that family stuff really gets to me if you want to if you want to know how to easily make me cry just give me a lot of family stuff which is this whole fucking show is about <laughs> and, and as i said that this is a very selfish thing <laughs> and kazuki says it as well uh, you've abandoned her all this time and now suddenly you want her back that's fucking bullshit we've been taking care of her this whole time and suddenly now you want her back just because 
you're related to her, you know, just because you're blood related, makes absolutely no fucking sense. <laughs> and I get it. I, 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 I understand both sides and it's a very emotional, emotionally choked up situation. And of course, you know, someone like Kazuki wouldn't be able to think through logically, you know, because he he already feels very attached to Mudi, just as Rei, as we saw in the previous episode, you know, just to really fucking hit us even more. But, you know, they're, they're very attached to Mudi now. And as Rei said, I, I, if it wasn't for you, I would have never been able to see the things that I've never seen before. You know, be able to witness all these things that he usually would never look at. But now, because of her, he's doing it. I, I just completely forgot where I went with my point. Oh yeah, Kazuki being upset at Misaki's selfishness. So yeah, he is emotionally charged. And of course, he's also feeling that, that horrible feeling of like, Oh yeah, you're right, I am not blood related to her. You know, we're not kin <laughs> after all. <laughs> After, after Miri came over to hug Misaki instead of him. <laughs> but he, he's up to that point, but where he, you know, of course he's not going to sit it out and be like, okay, well, you know, obviously Misaki loves all three of us and she would rather if all three of us lived together, <laughs> which honestly, pretty fucking dope, dude. Misaki, uh, sorry, Miri really get, really out here living the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it really could have just been to the point where we could just work out days to take care of the per- to take care of Beauty if, if that's really what you want, you know? You know, like, if you still want to be a part of her life, but then at the same time, Masaki's got a lot of ammunition. <laughs> Not only does she have the ammunition of Rei and Kazuki working in dangerous jobs, she's got the cancer, she- <laughs> she's got the blood- but she's got the blood relation to Miri, dude, she's- she's out here fucking loaded, and she came in this fucking- she, she really came into this episode like Rambo, and she- <laughs> Really fucked all the, everybody's emotions. <laughs> Except for Miri, of course. What we'll see in the next episode, maybe. But yeah, I- uh, I really like Misaki's character. <laughs> I don't know how, how much I have to reiterate that. <laughs> This whole episode uh, reminded me of Instructions Not Included, which is this Spanish, Mexican film? Uh, Spanish film uh, about a, a, a Mexican playboy who ends up getting a kid and he ends up uh, raising this kid. You know, he ends up like actually, I was gonna say falling in love, but you know, like 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 a dad like a dad would to 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 not I, just, I, I hope that doesn't sound awkward. But you know, he he loves he ends up loving his daughter and he wants to be to do the best things for her. And, and and with Misaki coming back being the mom who's just like yeah I know I tossed her away for a while but I want her back now. It really gives me vibes of the uh, uh, of the movie and I. <laughs> I cried like a little baby with instructions not included. <laughs> Look, man, I just have a really soft spot for single fathers trying to raise his daughter and having absolutely no clue about it, but trying his best anyways, all right? <laughs> oh yeah, one of the things that I was thinking about with Masaki when uh, I started to realize that maybe the reason why she came here was because she couldn't sing anymore or, or whatever, you know, like her dreams fully over or whatever. I, I started having like this bad feeling of like, oh my God, what if she's working for the organization? And, and <laughs> so I was thinking something bad was gonna happen. I was, for some reason, I was thinking, is she gonna sell her daughter? But I... <laughs> You know, I went through such a bad thing, but the moment, but but like that whole feeling kind of swept over me when Q Chan was the said that he was the one who who called her. So I was just like, oh, whoo! You know, she she didn't come here through the uh, the organization and all that. Maybe she did. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Q Chan's just covering it up. <laughs> but e even then, you know, I would assume. She was supposed to just take the kid away and, and, and basically that's it, you know, so those two can work on their job and all that. So I, I, I mean, there, there's really no reason to kill the kid right now. Anyways, there's no reason to kill her just yet. We'll see. We'll see, you know, we'll see if we'll eventually come to the point where, you know, someone's got- Or again, what if Orgin Rio just goes rogue? I don't know. Well, we'll just have to see. <sighs> and so with 
Kazuki and also Rei. You know, I already talked a little bit about how Kazuki uh, realized in this in, in this moment that even though he and Midi have been you know chums with each other this whole time, it seems like, and you know, nothing can beat a mother's touch. And <laughs> I, you know, Kazuki's really been. Uh, a straight up mother to to, to Muni this whole time, but like he realized at this point that he's like, wow, you're right, I am not her family, <laughs> and, and like, oh, that really fucking hurts. And, and you know, I guess it, it, I, I assume that is something that a lot of uh, adoptive parents would feel with you know kids, and if they end up meeting their uh, their, their blood relative, you know, the person who gave them up and all that, I would assume that's how some adoptive parents would feel, and. Oh, that that just fucking hurts. But then, the whole conversation about uh, uh about the uh, in the Ferris wheel about how he's like, you know, that whole cat thing. Which I was fucking laughing about that because I was like, oh, you know, I wonder if that cat makes a playback. It never did. <laughs> but here he goes. Remember what I told you last time? You picked up a cat. You know, don't commit. Uh, uh, don't. Co don't take it in if you can't fully commit somewhere around there. Hold on. Sometimes it's kinder to not get involved. If you're not really prepared, getting involved can make things worse. If you can't watch them, oh, if you can't watch over them to the end, don't get involved if you can't see it through. There you go. So, it, you know, that, that thing that he said in the first episode comes right back here to episode 10. And... Yeah, you know, as Ray said afterwards, like, well, this is cool to say that after we've already gotten attached to this little girl, and now we gotta give our daughter away. Well, shit. <laughs> well, fuck. <laughs> Look, all I'm gonna say is that if Masaki is true to her words and she's gonna conk out at some point, you know, because of her cancer, you, you can tr honestly, you can just leave the handle over to her for for you know a few years before she conked out. <laughs> And then you take her out. <laughs> Look, very morbid, but like, hey, Masaki brought it up first. <laughs> and I said, and Midi gets a nice little vacation time with her mother. And then Ka Rei and Kazuki get to go on a little slaughter rampage, you know, take out the entire Suwa family, get rid of, you know, Oginoryo and all that. I assume this man's gonna have a fight with... Ray, at the very least, well, we'll have to see. Every time I talk about how they should just wipe out the entire Sua family, you know, get rid of the problem, I wonder if that happens, then, like, who's going to give them jobs? And also, if you wipe out, like, a, a fucking killing mafia or whatever, uh, who, who else will take over? You know, sometimes, you know, there's an evil holding back a greater evil. You, you, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But... I, I do wonder that, you know, like, with that- Oh my god. Ooh, I almost- <laughs> I almost fucked up my leg. With the first episode, when they were saying, like, Oh, it's been about a year since we've got meaty. So I was just kind of like, okay, so it's been about a year, right? And now, here we are in episode 10. It's been about a year! <laughs> so we're actually- we're, we're actually hitting to the point where episode 1 was. So, like, are we actually just gonna just let Nasaki take over meaty for the most part until she dies? Look, if that's how that ends, I would say, wow, that's very mature, you know? If if Misaki doesn't somehow die from all this shit. So, <laughs> of course, you know, if she's going to die later on. A lot of, a lot of death talk. <laughs> <laughs> what if Oginorio goes rogue and he's like, I'm going to fuck up Misaki and then we'll, we'll, we'll to, in order to hear her last words, you know, so he can put it in his collection. I don't know. I don't know where else I wanted to talk about. I feel like I've uh, talked about what I wanted to for the most part. You know, it's a very sad episode. I very much enjoyed it. Uh, it probably 10 out of 10 cry every time sort of situation. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we also finally got to see Anna's fucking playful skills. Her playful, you know, her fucking skills at playing the piano and also singing. <laughs> she's trying her best, you know, she's she's trying her fucking damnedest. And uh, I, A for effort for her. She says she's got to practice, so A for effort. We'll have to see. But for right now, it is A for effort. <laughs> but it's just funny to hear that this was the last time that 
you know, Miri was talking about how Anna's playing skill was like horrifying or something like that. That was <laughs> we got we've got the, we've got that. So you know, that tie is knotted. If I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I will see you guys in the next video.